June 15th, 16th, I don't know, 2014. This is an 84 First Olds that I just acquired. One of the 3500 built, car 1384, built February 14th, uh, 1983. I'm going to go through. This one has T-tops. Needs much, but I think I can, you can see in there, I think I can fit the bill. Silver is not looking too hot, as well as the spoiler. And the wheels, you know, that kind of thing, but I will go through it. And see what I can, uh, what I can do. Limited room in the garage, but there's a it's kind of a quick overview. Cousin to the T-Type and the Monte Carlo. This two is a G-Body. Very nice overall. Features the AC with R12, all the Hearst graphics, screws, bucket seats. Again, hard to see, I know. But all the instrumentation is there and up and going. Door pads are, whoops, very nice. Doors, all that good stuff. So, uh, there's the Lightning Rod Shifters. I'll be getting into this one. More to come. Okay. Okay, on day one, progressing nicely. Got the door glass and window regulators out, which I'll go through. I'm going to cut off these uh, door hinge pins and the jam which will afford access to the aerial. I love it. It's got a broken mass cord. I can't wait to go through that. I've done so many of them. Ah, uh, how long with the seat? And um, the carpet, floor pans, I'll pull all that out. And uh, the interesting thing here is that often this is not uh, uncommon. The right remote mirror, I can't extract it because the cable is tied atop the the dash bottom. In other words, on the ceiling of the instrument cluster, it's uh, it's tied up in there with the wiring as it uh, crosses over, and it should be, or in the perfect world, would be down on the bottom. So I can't pull this door or that remote mirror because I can't get the uh, control out over here on the way over on the left hand side of the dash. And looking at the uh, T tops. And the seals inside here, everything seems to be wonderful along with the headliner and all that other good stuff. So I'm making, uh, making nice progress. No, uh, no surprises. Boy, those doors are nice. Oh boy, look at them. Man, the insides and the bottoms, beautiful. Juke padding, very nice. So there's the first progress report. Okay, and out with the uh, passenger window regulator assembly. You take these motors out, take the end caps off, burst the armatures, and uh, clean the brushes up. Stuff these uh, boss channels full of grease. So it'll work a lot nicer. Okay, now we're over to the driver door, power window motor. And you can see that uh, this one's pretty bad. And this will exemplify what, uh, what we're after here. Look at that armature. I'm going to clean this up and grout it. I don't know why it's this cuckered mess. But if you clean these brush heads up and again shove and force grease inside this main boss here where the worm ascends up in the shaft and then in these round pots uh, boy they, they work 30% better. So um, there's an example. <laughs> Doesn't get much worse, does it? 
Wow. Okay. All right, and here's pretty much the uh, the result. Clean this all up and uh, again burst that armature and grout it. It's a little pitted on the shaft, but it should be fine. And uh, limiting switch, overheat switch. It's a bimetal switch. Looks uh, to be fine. The points look good and the brush holders are clean. So we'll reassemble that and cram some grease down that boss and she will run like new. Alright, there it is. Okay, brushes are all uh, all loaded. And the brush loader is in the bearing end cap, always is. You have the grease on the armature. Stuff the jug full of grease, it's full. And man, is it going to work nice. And that's how you do uh, renew power window motors. Easy. Okay, um, just a quick note, after the uh, brush head is loaded, you will bend these ears back down into place to hold the brush cap on, and uh, that's the end of it. That's the power window motor. Okay. Between the main gear on the body and the worm, the gear off the worm, you can see uh, all you need to do is get a gun, inject it. I've already done this and fill that pot till it's just filthy with grease. And boy, it just loves it. And it runs wonderfully. Okay, that's it on power window motors. We're here on the passenger side. We've got this door bottom all taken care of, if this uh, can be seen. It's very pristine under here. Put the weather strips on. And I got the window regulator in, ready to go in this side to put the glass in. Gonna probably do some finish work so I can't hang the mirror. And I'm starting to clean this seat here. Okay, and proceeding to the driver's side the next day, July 21. I got this door off and I'm gonna rebush this uh, side of it. And. Uh, Get the seats out, clean them up, they're very nice. Just need a little general clean. Maybe take out the power seat to transmission and oil that up to cables and so on in the drives. But uh, the door jams are very nice. And uh, that dreaded word rust isn't here. Okay, and so, on to the uh, power seats. Uh, I've taken these tracks out and cleaned them and lubricated the cables. These cases are rather problematic. What happens is the plastic deteriorates. Generally the motor falls off the stool and there's no uh, exception here. And what I've done with uh, tie straps, several of them, is kind of reinforce this case anticipating that to happen. Um, and it just works marvelously and uh, with a nice greasy track and cables it should, uh, it should perform just fine as it is. And you can hear that uh, everything sounds real, uh, real good. Very easy job and uh, this bunker here of solenoids you separate the halves and then you get to of course grease in these gear pots inside and the various solenoids command the different cables to tilt forward or backward or back and forth and so on. So it's uh, primitive, it's of a time and uh, well built and works uh, works very well. So that takes care of these uh, that takes care of these seats. That's what you do. Or what I do. Okay. And uh, June 18, an update. There's a broken mass cord, which is atypical in any GM power aerial era of this time, whereby the limiting switch in this case here cannot move to open the circuit up, be it up or down. Hence, the motor runs uh, continuously, or did run continuously while it was still plugged in. And uh, this cord breaks, so you simply install 
uh, a kit that's readily available and you get a new section um, of the antenna which is in this example the upper section to uh, to renew it oil the bearing and bearing uh, bosses and pots in the motor clean the limiting switch and there's a big uh, worm gear in here and this is where the cable starts to ascend up the shaft and grease that as well so that's done the aerial will now work that's what I'm doing today okay a couple days later here on June 25 I'm into the t-tops and this is looking aft where the top ends and the rest of the roof begins looks real good as well as the uh, center support structure but wait things change suddenly from good to bad you've just seen the worst of it that being the driver's side and over on the passengers it's not much but somewhat better look at that metal okay next day got the snap-on sandblaster out and now we see the exposed truth could be worse Could be better. So now that this is all sandblasted and you see the naked truth, um, I'm going to put some metal in it. I showed you the insides. That's very encouraging. And see what uh, what happens next. Somebody's going to be doing the metal. It isn't going to be me. I know not of. Uh, of such things I'm not a I'm not a body guy so the uh, rails in the back and so on are fine anyway I showed you all that and uh, that's that little bit of progress okay okay a couple hours later and uh, I have now treated the metal with a rust encapsulator that uh, stops rust dead in its tracks, or supposedly does. You know, you gotta put something on them when they're naked. So hopefully it'll work, and in 50 years when someone has this off again, if the car's even around, they'll, they'll thank me one day. So that's done. Okay, and making progress, marking out all the uh, little indiscrepancies. I'm now taking the front apart, Front end apart, the fascia, the header, ah, the bumpers, bumper guards, fillers, the header, uh, as it'll, as to allow it to be painted. Mako has already uh, been kind enough to come over and examine this most latest uh, car, and um, are very excited once again to to get cracking and get at it. And I'm. Happy they are, uh, they are enth as enthusiastic as I am. So that's what's going on with that. Take the back off next. That's today's video. Okay, later on in the day, starting to notice dramatic uh, differences in appearance now. Uh, anyway, the striping's all off. So, now to do that, just a heat gun. In about 10 minutes, or the razor blade is what you want to do to uh, to get all that off, and it uh, comes off. Oh boy, it's ridiculous how easy it is! So, there's that phase of it. Gee, it doesn't look like about 300 bucks of the stripes, does it? Whew. So, hence a naked car.
good progress. Well, here it is, nearing August 1st. What is it, the 28th of June? Other than this hood emblem that I just now, whatever we want to call it, header badge. Uh, this is the Naked Hearst. This is all, as I said before, off and just two little bolts retaining it. All the sins are sinfully marked. Bumps, scratches, discrepancies. Showed you the quarter glass. Handles, keyholes, yada yada. I guess naked hearst is the right term. And this trunk, I don't know if I videoed this or not. Lid is uh, very nice all the way across. There's a latch. Are you going dizzy? Fender extensions, upper bumper, fascias, hood scoop, quarter glass. Nothing going on here, but I don't like paint lines. And the bridge. This they're going to fix. We've seen that before. That uh, pillar molding's going in a few seconds. And that leaves the rest of the, what do you call it, naked truth. No sense in going after the engine. Body shops are dust bowls. Can we talk a second about customer service? Hey, Tom, Jeff, Mako. It is 3.30, Monday afternoon. Tom, let's have you bring the car in Wednesday, any time after about 8.30. Any time after about 8.30 Wednesday morning, we will see you then. Any changes, can we call let me know? If that doesn't work, let me know. Uh, if not, I have you inked in Wednesday at 8.30. Thanks, my friend. Have a good day. Oh my God, there's proof. There's what I've been telling you. There's what I well tried to articulate. And again, there's nothing new here. Did you hear what he said, baby? <laughs> He's got us penned in. That's the kind of enthusiasm and work ethic that I'm talking about. That's what's expectant. That's what I get. I don't have any allegiance or bare favoritism to anybody or anyone. Uh, I, look, I don't know anything about pain or body, but I know every time I go to Mako, that's the treatment I always, always get. So we are ready to rock. That's put up or shut up. That's why I'll always be a make a follower. That's why I'll always go back. Look at this thing. I mean, here's an example where he's as enthusiastic as, as I am and anxious to get ripping and tearing as much as I am. <laughs> and and I, I welcome that enthusiasm. It just, it just really, you know, look, at I relish a call like that. And, you know, here we go again, the broken record, uh, more proof, you know, Mako is the place to go. That's my opinion and one I'm going to stick to no matter what. There it is. Ah, shit.